So friends, how did those word problems go? SSLE number 11, huh? We're almost done with the chapter. So that means we're starting, we will have the new textbook that we'll need by next week. We'll have the test on Tuesday, Wednesday, depending upon which cohort you're in. Obviously, this group is Tuesday and tomorrow's cohort's Wednesday. Um, hey, uh, so friends, did anyone recognize problem number one? I changed the words, didn't I? Yeah, good. I'm glad you guys recognized that. So there's no reason for me to work out number one because number one, we did notes on. Just transfer it. Done the same way. But let's go to problem number two. Is that okay? And I'll read it aloud. No, I'm not going to make any of you read. You already heard, heard my dilemma with that back in fifth grade. Rachel read twice as many books as in July as she did in June. If she read a total of 24 books during these two months, how many books did she read each month? Okay. So this is problem number two off that worksheet. So let me ask you this. Is Rachel a variable in this problem? No, it's the person that we're talking about. So our two variables in this one are going to be June and July. And we have to, for my, my, my reasoning sense, I'm going to make one of them X and one of them Y. I wouldn't make them J because they'd both be J and that'd be hard to solve by. So let's call June X and let's call July Y. Okay? Feel comfortable so far with this? So again, it says, Rachel, Rachel read twice as many books in June as she did in July. She read a total of 24 books during those months. So between June and July, there was 24 books that she had read. Okay, and how many did she read each month? So it could be 24 and 0, 23 and 1, 22 and 2 so on and so forth, or we can figure out, let's see if we can do this. So remember, my friends, the x plus y equals 24 is getting you one point. I can do it in my head, answer only, you're going to miss three points on the problem, because one of the points is setting up the first equation. The second point is for another equation that we'll set up. Okay, so let's see if we can decipher this, and this comes from the first sentence. Rachel read twice as many books in July as she did in June. Rachel read twice as many books in July. So July, she read how many, how many more books in July? Twice as much, so 2x. Okay. Now, do we make sense of this problem? Let's see. The x plus y equals 24. June, July, 24 books read. In July, she read twice as many books as she read in June. So whatever she read in June, we had to double it. There's your second point. We have x plus y equals 24 and y equals 2x. Yes? My friends, this problem doesn't seem to be set up as an elimination problem. Agree? It's not elimination because my x's and my y's don't line up. On one of the equations, I have x and y on the left side of the equal sign. And on the second equation, I have x and y on alternate sides. Does that make sense? So if I'm not going to use elimination, what would make sense to do with this problem? What would make sense to solve the x plus y equals 24 and the y equals 2x? What would make sense? Substitution. Substitution. Very good. Substitution is going to work really nicely here. So I'm going to take this 2x, and I'm going to plug it in for the y there. So that gives me x plus 2x equals 24. Add those together, that gives me 3x equals 24. Divide by 3, x equals 8. Yeah. So June is 8 books. 
And July is going to be 8 times, plug 8 right there, 8 times 2 or 2 times 8, 16 books here. Now let's make sure we have this correct, okay? Does it make sense that she read more books in July than June according to our problem? Yeah, I think we did it right. Okay, so my friends, our points, our points for this problem would go as is. I would give you a highlight where all the points are going to come in. There's one point. There's another point. Having some sort of work is another point. So you get three points before you even get the problem right, as long as you have something there. And then one point, one point. And there's your five points for this problem. Okay? So I want to see the thought process. Yeah, you might get it right by guessing because we're using smaller numbers, agree? So you might get right doing the combinations in your head, but I can't grade inside your head. So I want to just be just let you know exactly how I'm going to grade this so you have a full comprehension of this is how I'm going to earn points. Now, my friends, this blue region here of work is different for each and every one of you. Some of you will have a lot more work than this. Some of you might have a lot less. And some of you might have about the same amount. Who's the right one and who should get the points? All of you. Show some sort of work that's taking place. Okay? Yeah. So for like new problems or for like just the two, should you set it up like that every time? Like what what is not like like the first one and there's time and there's Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. That's just how this one worked out. Yeah. But like for for ones that only have the two variables, should you just set it up like this every time? Mm -hmm. Yeah, so I'm looking for equation one, equation two, because all, all of the problems that I'll give you will kind of have two equations some, somehow. Okay. Some sort of, and they could both have the X and Y on the left side. They could have, on like in this case, the X and Y on opposite sides of the equal sign. It, it just depends how the problem reads. So they're not all guaranteed to always flow 100% in the way we did it. Okay, my friends, do we feel comfortable with problem number two? Okay. May I move on to problem number three? Um, yeah, okay. Problem number three. Oops, I don't want to do that in a highlighter, so that's kind of fun. Problem number three. Okay, let's read the problem. Pencil down. Sam worked a total of four hours this past weekend, and Devin worked six hours. Sam earns $8 less per hour, then twice the amount of Devin earns per hour. Oh, man, are you kidding me? Okay, well, let's still read it. The total money earned by both individuals combined this past weekend was $220. What are the wages for Sam and Devin? So what are my two unknowns? I know I'm going to use X and Y, but what's going to be X and Y? Sam and Devin, thank you. So we have Sam, and we have Devin. Okay, we have to label one of them X, one of them Y. Doesn't really matter which one. So let's call Sam X, and we'll call Devin Y. We've identified the variables we're going to deal with. So we get an answer of X equals a number at the end. That's talking about Sam. If we get an answer of Y equals at the end, that's we're talking about Devin. Okay, so Sam worked four hours this past weekend. Let's see. Okay, so Sam er worked four hours this weekend. Devin worked six hours this weekend. Okay. The X and the Y is going to be what, what they each make per hour. 
Okay? And they make different because they tell us that. And they tell us that they that that this past weekend there was $220 that was made. Okay? So there's our first point. Sam, you work four hours. Sam, you get four times whatever your hourly hourly rate is, and that's how much you get paid. Devin, you work six hours. You get six times whatever your hourly wage is. But I know the two of you together only made 220 bucks. I don't know if that's good, bad, or indifferent. We'll figure this out. So there's our first equation. The second equation is a little different. Sam earns $8 less per hour than twice the amount of Devin. Sam earns, okay, you with me so far? $8 less, because so I'm going to subtract 8, than twice the amount Devin makes. So let me stop. Okay, that was a tougher one to figure out. That's a little tougher one to figure out. We have to read through it. Hey, Sam's wage happens to be $8 less than twice what Devin makes. So if I double Devin's rate and subtract $8 from that, that's how much Sam makes per hour. Now, my good friends, this one is not set up to do elimination either, is it? And why can I say that? One, X and Y aren't on the same side for both equations, so they're not lined up. So what method should we use? Okay. Do I have one letter equal to some quantity? I think so. I know that x is equal to whatever 2 times y would be and subtract 8. Would be just multiply by 2. Okay, I like your thinking, but I'm, I'm going to steer you a little bit if that's okay. So, so I, I, I'm going to have you answer this question real quick. Are my x and my y on both equations on the same side of the equal sign? Do you agree with that? Yeah. So right there, that should steer us away from you doing what you're doing. I totally like your thought process. And, and if, if we had x and then the 2y on the same side, what you're saying is totally right. So when you plug in 2y times negative 8, yeah. times x squared. Yeah. Hey, how many points is this right here? One for each, right? Two points? Yeah. So now I'm going to take this here. And I'm going to substitute it in right there. So I'm going to get 4 parentheses plus 6y equals 220. My friends, x used to live right here. Agree? x doesn't live there. We're going to replace it with 2y minus 8 now. And because you had really good middle school teachers, you know you have to distribute. Do you agree with that? I do have some like terms. I have an 8y and a 6y. And if I add those together, I think I get 14y. Two twenty. Add 32. Add 32. I ran out of room. So I get 14y is equal to 220 added to 232. And I believe that's 252. And then we're going to divide both sides by 14. Now, I'm not really trying to check to see if you can uh, multiply right now or divide right now. I'd say, heck, break out with your friend, the calculator, and go 25, oops, turned on first, 252 divided by 14. Oh. Y is 18. Y is 18. Oh. Devin makes $18 per hour. Devin makes $18 per hour. 
So I know this. I'm going to take that 18. I'm going to plug it either into the Y right here or the Y right here. What letter am I looking for right now for Sam? X. X. So is one of those already set up to solve for X? The bottom one. Now I can plug it in the top one. Your answer is going to be the same. But the bottom one's already set up for that. All right. So I'm going to do X equals 2 parentheses minus 8. Y used to live here. But look, we solved that y is 18. 2 times 18 is 36. Is that right? Minus 8. x equals. Oh. All right. So now, now let's make sure we answer this right. Okay. One point for this equation, one point for this equation. So all this work, which I had kind of a lot, is another point. And if those are both right, those are our last two points. Sam worked for a total of four hours this past weekend. So Sam worked definitely less work. Okay. 36 minus 24. Oh, 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 I made a mistake. That happens. Where are we at? 36, oh, plus 28. Oh, I am I am so happy. I have really, really, wait, wait, 36, my 36, that's 28? Is that right? Oh, oh, thank you. This guy would have missed one point. He would have only gotten a four out of five. Thank goodness I'm amongst very intelligent people. I was told a long time ago, if you want to look smart, surround yourself with the smartest people you know. So you can steal their solutions. <sighs> Got that. I'm amongst the smartest people I know. So you all, you brought me up. Thank you. Okay. All right. Let's see. Did I answer this right? So we, we are okay that Sam worked less time than Devin. Yes? Okay. Sam earns $8 less than twice the amount of Devin. So should Sam have earned more? Does that make sense? He earned $8 less than twice as much as what Devin made. Oh, boy. Yeah, I think we answered it. I think we did okay. I kind of like that. And I like that you all felt comfortable to support me. It's one of the best things you can do for one of one each other. You know what I'd say to you when you're leaving class? Take care of one another. Guess what this class did for me? It took care of me. It took care of one another. That's a valuable lesson. I like that. Appreciate you. Hey, I'm going to go to the back side. Is that okay? Oh boy, look at number four. We did that one, didn't we? Oh man, I tell you, I'm plagiarizing my own stuff. I'm stealing from my, your homework to do lessons. Shame on me. So number four is done. It was on yesterday's notes. Yeah. Um, it says six minutes instead of Is this backwards? Is this in the same? No, it just says the. Oh wait, no, never mind. It is. The same. It is the same. I oh. got confused. No, no. It, well, you know, I'm gonna make mistakes all day long. So, so thanks for double checking. So uh, that was the same problem as yeah. last time. Okay. Okay. Cool. We got it. All right. Last problem. It says a swimming team used vans and cars to transport the swimmers to a meet. Vans each had seven swimmers, and cars each had three swimmers. A total of 66 swimmers were transported using a total of 10 vehicles. How many vans and how many cars were used to transport the swimmers? Oh, so... We're, we are, this swim team, they're so green. They're worried about the environment. 
They don't want all the kids to show up in different cars. We're going to carpool. I like, well, look at that. Carpool to a pool meet. I like it. Look at that. You had no idea I was going to bring environmental science in today, did you? Look at that cross curriculum. Oh, man. Best day ever. All right. So, my friends, what are my two things that I'm worried about? Am I worried about swimmers? Cars and vans. I like it. Cars and vans. All right. Now, I could get cutesy and say, hey, we're going to use C and V. But I know for a fact some of you would be going, huh? We haven't solved for C and V. You're right. So let's go back to X and Y. Which one should be X? Your choice. Cars. Cars. All right. Cars is X. And vans would be Y. Sound good? Okay. Hey, how many vehicles are we talking about this, this whole problem we're dealing with? Ten. So I know if I took all my cars and all of my vans, there's going to be ten vehicles that we're using. Okay, I feel pretty good about this. Each van can carry how many swimmers? Seven. Seven. And each car can carry how many swimmers? Three. Hey, how many people are we transporting? How many swimmers? 66. Yeah. No, well, well I, I guess it could. I guess it could. Because maybe it's like, you know, high school swim team, where you have high school kids that are driving. But they haven't told us that one. We're just worried about the swimmers on the team. So I guess it would be possible to say, yeah, if the cars could carry this many people, one of those people technically could have been a swimmer. So I think that's a good thought. Hey, my friends, this one is set up to do elimination. Agree? Let's do elimination on this one. And why can I say that elimination would work better on this one than substitution? Yeah, X and Y are on the same side of the equal sign for both equations. Great job. Okay. So we have to pick. What do we want to get rid of, x or y? I'd probably choose x. So I'm going to choose to multiply everything on this one by negative 3. And the reason I chose x was 7 is a bigger number. And the reason I have to make it negative is because when I distribute it, I'm going to get negative 3x minus 3y equals negative 30. Nothing has to happen to the second equation, though sometimes it could. All right, let's add them up. X's are gone. Negative 3 plus 7 is 4, so I get 4Y. 66 subtract 30 36. is 36 this week. Yeah, I like it. Divide by 4, so Y is equal to 9. So we have 9 bands. Oh, I don't even have to do any work. I can do this on my own right now. One car. One car. Yeah. Why? How do we know that? Well, there was 10 vehicles total. So we have one car and nine vans and our swimmers. The rest of the story that we haven't heard, they won the swim meet. In fact, one of the kids broke a state record. You had no idea. Oh, God. Uh, when did that? Uh, okay. <laughs> Hey, my friends, I feel pretty good about that worksheet. I feel pretty good about it. Now, sometimes, sometimes, when you're doing your own work, sometimes you might want to hear it out loud. So, my friend, when we get to our quiz, when we get to our my quiz, the quiz that we or the test that we have on Tuesday or Wednesday, if you want me to read a problem to you because you like to be able to hear it out loud, just let me know. Just raise your hand. And Dan, 
raises his hand. Hey, what do you got, Jan? Hey, can you read this one to me? Sure. And I can read it out loud. Maybe by hearing it, that might help a little comprehension. There's no shame in this, by the way, my friends. And there's no less points, my friends. This is just me. If you choose, you know what? Yeah, I could read this. Maybe read it once. Yeah, maybe I should hear it out loud. So Dan, Dan, I'm using you as my example. I'm not saying that you're going to ask me for it to read it. But if, if Dan said, hey, what are you doing? I'll pick up your paper and say, yeah, it says Becky and Susan went to the store and they bought candy bars. Becky bought 14 more candy bars than Susan. Between the two of them, they bought 30 candy bars. How many each bought a candy bar? Are you hearing that? That might click a couple things. And I don't want to say you need it, but in case you do. Deal? And again, my friends, there is zero shame in doing that. And if a teacher ever says to you, no, you should know how to read. Well, you do know how to read. What's the shame in saying, hey, can you just read that aloud to me? Because you know as well as I, one, you have the kind of the pressure on you doing a test. But also, you might have a little bit of a anxiety just as a test. So ask me. I am more than happy. You are not bothering me. And even if you say, I give you the test back and I walk away. And you go back, and you're like, okay, Mr. Service, read it to me, great. And you're looking at it again. Can you read that to me again? Sure. I'll read it to you. Okay? Now, I'm not going to guide you. I'm not going to be like, okay. Yeah, vans and cars. Those are your variables. I'm not going to do that. I'm going to read it to you. Okay? And my friends, again, zero shame in asking. Zero shame. Not a loss of points. If you want me to read it to you. I'm happy to do it. And I'm honored to do it. Okay? So my friends, we have a... Let's take a look at... Uh, I'm going to go back onto my Schoology page. So we're in the fourth week. Fourth week. Yes, I know there's a fifth week already put. That's next week. We don't need to worry about next week. You don't need to go in that folder going, oh, what am I doing? Oh my gosh, this is all due. No, if you don't see a due date next to it, it's not due. It hadn't been assigned yet. Now, I do put, like right now, I don't have a due date on my assignment right this very second. I will change that in a few minutes. But my friends, what I'd like us to do, let me just take a quick glance. <coughs> totally work. Okay, we're going to do this, my friends. There's going to be two worksheets for us to work on. You with me? I want you to do the odds only for SSLE 12 and SSLE 13. Does that make sense? My friends, on Monday, when we're all together online, when we're all together online, I'll go over those problems. The nice thing is, I'm going to give you the odd problems. So there's a YouTube link to walk you through those problems. So please feel free to utilize it. I don't have the YouTube link there because I'm like, ah, you should be using that. Use it. Utilize it. Learn. But on Monday, we are going to be going through this review as after we get done talking about 12 and 13, getting all the questions answered. We're going to take a look at this review. So if you have that review, because you have last semester's book, great. If you don't have that review, click on it while we're in class so we can go over it. And then really what I'm going to do for that number 15 
is that is the review that we go to use on our test, either on Tuesday or Wednesday, depending upon what cohort you're in. You guys are a Tuesday. So it's basically that SSLE 15 during Monday's class. I'm going to be like, okay, if you see any on there you'd like me to work out. Billy says, yeah, could you do number five? Yeah, let's do number five. And I'll work out number five. You know, Jennifer says, I don't understand number 15. Hey, let's do number 15. Okay? Does everyone feel comfortable with what I'm assigning? And what I will do, if you don't have your book with you, I will pull this up. We're, we're doing which ones? Odds. Okay. I'm going to pull this up. And I think I could. Uh, yep. Hey, look at that. I, I can only fit the first one on there. So why don't you try that one? And while you're doing that, I'm actually going to put my due dates for um, this. So I'm going to freeze that. I don't even have to freeze it. I'll just do that. All right. Everyone feel good? So go ahead and start on that number one, if you would. I'm going to pause. How do we feel about this? It says, last year you mowed lawns or shoveled snow for 10 households. So I'd say, and then you charge $200 a season to mow the lawn and $180 a season to shovel snow. Boy, that's a bonus this year. We haven't got a lot of snow. If you earned $1,880 last year, how many households did you mow the lawn for and how many did you shovel snow for? Use a system of equations to solve. So I think I would set this one up is I'd say lawns X equals X, snow equals Y. Sound good? So lawns X, snow, Y. And then I know I'd go x plus y equals 10 as my equation. And then I would know that I would go 200x plus 180y equals 1880. I think that would be appropriate. Let me see if I can write on this. So I would go... Mo, oops, that's not gonna work. How am I gonna write on that? How can I write on that? That makes sense. Actually, we just do this. Lawn, mo, x, snow, y. I'd go with that. And then I know that for 10 households, so that means x plus y equals 10. There's one equation. And then 200, 200x plus 180y equals 1880. So I would go ahead and try and solve that. Okay. So let me go back to here. Does everyone have that written if you need it? Go back here. Oops, actually, I'm going to go here. Click here. Click here. I'm going to click here. We're going to go back into week four. Let's make sure I have it done appropriately for everybody. So there's two things missing from here so far. I have a uh, um. Oh, I didn't do that for him. <laughs> That's okay. I'm going to add the video probably right here and then the notes like right here. But then notice it says SSLE 12 odds only due Monday, February 1st, online class, so during our remote. And SSLE 13 odds, uh, odds only due on Monday, February 1st, online class. And then here I put SSLE 15 review. We will work on this review online. Monday, February 1st. That doesn't mean it's due. It means you show up to it 
and you have it like the blank version that you're looking at. And then we will have be preparing for the test on Tuesday or Wednesday. Does that make sense? Cool. Rest of the period is yours to hang out. Great job today. Hey, thanks for looking out for me today too on some of the incorrect